Welcome back. Ah, friends, I'm excited. Today I got a mic. I got a new mic, and I'm hoping that it helps with the audio quality of this podcast and makes it more pleasing for you to listen to my voice. Uh, one thing I was just thinking about earlier that I thought was kind of funny is like, man, you know, I'm excited to get friends on the show, and I've been talking to friends and working out some plans. Um, yeah, because, uh, you know, being by yourself in a room and talking as if you're having a full-length conversation with somebody. It's a little weird, uh, which is good, because if it felt natural, we should all be worried. Uh, <laughs> uh, but today, what I have for you is a letter from St. Augustine to Probo on prayer, and I think that this is, you know, pretty wonderful. So since I think it's wonderful, I'm not going to, you know, uh, discourage you from this podcast by just talking ad nauseum about other things, but let's get into the letter. Um, all right, so a letter from St. Augustine to Probo. You may still want to ask why the apostle said, We do not know what is right to pray for, because surely we cannot believe that either he or those whom he wrote did not know the Lord's prayer. He showed that he himself shared this uncertainty. Did he know what it was right to pray for when he was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel from Satan to bruise him, so that he might not be puffed up, by the greatness of what was revealed to him? Three times he asked the Lord to take it away from him, which showed that he did not know what he should ask for in prayer. At last we heard the Lord's answer, explaining why the prayer of so great a man was not granted and why it was not expedient for it to be granted. My grace is sufficient for you, for power shines forth more perfectly in weakness. In the kind of affliction, then, which can bring either good or ill, we do not know what is right to pray for, yet, because it is difficult, troublesome, and against the, gra against the gain, oh, no, against the grain for us. Weak as we are, we do what every human would do. We pray that it may be taken away for, from us. We owe, however, at least this much in our duty to God. If he does not take it away, we must not imagine that we are being forgotten by him. But because of loving endurance of evil must await great blessing in its place. In this way, power shines forth more perfectly in weakness. These words are written to prevent us from having too great an opinion of ourselves if our prayer is granted. When we are impatient in asking for something that it would be better not to receive, and to prevent us from being dejected and distrustful of God's mercy towards us. If our prayer is not granted, when we ask for something that would bring us great affliction or completely ruin us through the corruption, corrupting influence of prosperity, in these cases we do not know what is right to ask for in prayer. Therefore, if something happens that we did not pray for, we must have no doubt at all that what God wants is more expedient than what we wanted ourselves. Our great mediator gave us an example of this. After he had said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup be taken away from me. He immediately added, Yet not what I will, but what you will, Father so transforming the human will that was his through his taking a human nature. As a consequence, and rightly so, through the obedience of one man, the many are made righteous. So, that is the end of the letter. And I think it's really kind of brilliant. Um, yeah, because how many of us in the spiritual life have a particular thing of which we ask, hey, uh, this is a thorn in my side, whether it be painful circumstances in life, uh, a particular struggle within this spiritual faith. Uh, I mean, 
these are two like really relevant examples that I think touch all of us. Um, and it's brilliant how Augustine points this out that, hey, look, Paul was amazing. Paul, one of the, like the apostle, as many refer to him, prayed for something and wasn't granted it. And then points out, hey, guess what? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, prayed for something and wasn't granted it. But that these are not the, you know, the result of having a death father in heaven, but it is the result of God being a good father and giving us not what is good, but giving us what is best. And that this thorn and Paul's side, this angel of Satan, was really a gift to him because it kept him from through the progression and being able to do things for God and being able to have these great signs, be able to have these revelations. Um, it kept him humble. It kept him holy, which is really interesting because when we think of greatness in the spiritual life, I think it's very easy to think of what are the signs of holiness that accompany grace, which are usually great signs. Like you think of Padre Pio, you think of the stigmata, you think of by location, you think of uh, being able to read people's hearts and like know when somebody is withholding something in confession. And these are you know, something that uh, these are the signs that we would look to because they accompany grace. And it is good to look at these signs and it's good to recognize that. But there's something more important because, you know, God also says in the Bible that, you know, not all who cry out, Lord, Lord, we ate and drank with you. We cast out demons in your name. We healed the sick in your name. Uh, we'll be let into the kingdom of God. And he'll say, like, I do, I do not know you. And he's, why does God say this? Well, one, in this particular place, God says this because of people who see those in need, who are Christians and like do not act in love and charity and help those who are in need, but go about their lives. But also here too, we see that, you know, it's not the greatness of our actions that is holiness. It's our interior relationship with Christ and love with him and that that love can be lost through the building of spiritual progress and God being able to give us these gifts that we can share with the world. But if we focus on the gifts and we try to give the gifts, but we forget our relationship with God or we just, we become prideful, then everything we do is for nothing because we've lost ourselves. And in a sense we're, we're gaining the world, but we're losing ourselves. Um, so these things, these gifts from God of not answering the prayer and keeping us holy are actually superb gifts that ensure that we will be saved along with the salvation of others and our mission here on earth. So, yeah, that's what I had to share with you. Um, God bless you. This is a little, I uh, don't know if this is going to be a shorter podcast. It looks pretty short to me, but hope you guys have a great time, and I look forward to giving you more you know, spiritual things that I think are great, that I think will also help you. So, God bless you. Pray for me, and I'll pray for you.